uh, hello student friends uh, in the last class we have discussed about maya angelou's uh, phenomena lumen and let us today concentrate on what she writes in why the caged bird sings this is another poem and we will see here uh, what is that she wants to convey to the readers okay uh, look at the first stanza i think you have the copy with you in your hand and see there what she tells i'll just tell what actually is there in the uh, why the caged bird sings okay uh, in the first stanza she refers to nature okay and describes the way a free bird leaps on the back of the wind the bird a free bird how a free bird appears in the nature that's what she brings in the first stanza and she describes the uh, free bird that uh, the birds flight against the orange sky as if it is going to own the whole sky she tells okay and the free bird has uh, the right to claim the sky see what this is what she refers there brings in the poem that uh, it claims the sky itself uh, being uh, because it is free now so it can fly any way it likes okay and as it uh, flies anywhere everywhere as it wants or as it likes that is what is not the uh, privilege of this caged bird and see here remember caged bird she is referring to the uh, her own uh, race her own race she is referring to okay not actually exactly the bird she is referring but she brings in that image of that free bird that how the free people enjoy their life and how about these people from the other race in that race how they suffer how they behave they how they are made to behave like a, uh, a caged bird they feel okay so the, the the way she describes the orange sun rays gives the reader an appreciation for the uh, natural beauty of the sky and her description of the way the bird dips his wing the free bird helps the reader to appreciate the bird in his natural habitat enjoying his freedom see the the words very words that she uses here in the poem using the image of that bird and the nature outside free nature and freedom free movement of that bird this is what easily makes us create that image in our inner eye okay hope you are getting my point so the next stanza she what she brings in here is that this stanza is in stark contrast with the first stanza here by using the word but to begin this stanza the speaker the author prepares the reader for the contrast opposite thing okay so when a free bird is like that look at the caged bird next she turns to the caged bird describes the bird that stalks his narrow cage in the second stanza okay the tone is immediately and drastically changed from peaceful satisfied and joyful uh, uh, to the one that is a dark unnerving and uh, even frustrating so the situation of the caged bird is frustrating it is unnerving and it is dark it is kept in dark look at the other bird i think look at the contrasting things that she brings in here through the image of the bird free bird and the caged bird okay and uh, she describes that the caged bird uh, rarely even gets a glimpse not actually every day it can look at the sky and nature outside rarely it gets a glimpse that's just a glimpse of the sky while the free bird gets to enjoy the full sky look at the situation of the free bird and the caged bird look at the all american white people and look at these uh, negro people there in american uh, culture how they had to suffer there and how they had to work hard there to lead their life in their culture okay the racial discrimination how she stresses there okay and she claims that uh, his wings are clipped the caged bird's wings are clipped and his feet are tied they cannot do anything freely there because they had to follow the master's rule there in the other culture okay so this is what her autobiography reveals okay she felt restricted from enjoying the freedom that should have been her right as a human being they were also human beings they were americans also human beings only but still they were not given that opportunity to be human beings because and they were used as the workers in the industry 
so the speaker then reveals that these are the very reasons that the bird opens his throat to sing so because they are caged they had to sing where they are they had to express their experiences their thoughts and their feelings their sufferings their frustration they had to share with other people of their race okay so this is what is the prime cause for her saying that the caged bird sings why the caged bird sings she gives a title based on this okay so she wrote and sang and danced because it was her way of expressing her longing for freedom this way she used there to express her longing for freedom for the freedom and equality fraternity uh, sitting along, along with them as martin luther spoke in his uh, dream in his address that i have a dream similarly she writes here in here in her poems okay so the third stanza reverts back to the free bird again first stanza free bird second stanza caged bird then third stanza the again free bird uh, cementing the difference between the free bird and the caged bird in the minds of the readers okay brings in both contrasting things contrasting experiences okay uh, she writes that a free bird thinks of another breeze enjoys and enjoys and enjoys and keeps on thinking about the breeze after breeze breeze after breeze the pleasant climate okay that uh, he can enjoy the uh, sighing trees the trees a uh, slow blowing wind from the trees okay and uh, be free to find his own food the bird he finds his own food outside somewhere flying anywhere he liked okay ha look, look at the caged bird it is denied of uh, that freedom of choosing its own food okay i uh, the tone with which she writes the first and third stanza contrasts with the second stanza that readers can feel the difference easily okay third stanza contrasts both the first and third stanza give the reader a sense of ecstasy and thrill uh, which serve to make the second stanza uh, seem all the more amusing and even uh, oppressive the way they suffered in that american days okay mm, the fourth stanza continues the parallel between the free bird and the caged bird look at the lines there the it continues fourth one the parallel between the free bird and the caged bird okay the first line serves to starkly contrast the last line in the third stanza observe the lines there uh, it is dark and uh, uh, daunting the reality of the life of the caged bird is revealed in this line underline that that bird stands on the grave of uh, dreams this reveals the author's feelings about her own dreams she has so many dreams that have uh, died because she was never given the freedom to achieve all that her while counterparts were able to achieve counterparts were the white race and these people and her race the negro race they had to suffer the frustration in the hands of the white race okay and discrimination and racism made up her cage discrimination and this is what she refers as cage here that discrimination and racism okay and although she sang she felt her voice was not heard in the wide world outside the wide world because the support from all over the world they had to get there you know, to get freedom and get equality and fraternity there in the american culture but only by those nearest uh, her cage they could only hear okay the second line of this stanza in uh, not only dark is not only dark but even frightening means it stresses again further there how uh, effective and how unnerving was how frustrating was the uh, racial discrimination there for them okay so the author describes the birds cries birds cries that is singing the address of these dark people okay shouts on a nightmare scream at this point the caged bird is so despondent in his life of captivity that his screams are like that of someone having a nightmare means as someone somebody has a nightmare like that it sounds here the screams of the caged bird okay and his wings are clipped the caged bird's wings are clipped and his feet are tied 
see there what could a uh, caged bird that is uh, feet are tied and wings are clipped could not fly could not come out and could not do anything but only sing and that becomes a scream and that won't appeal to people outside world and it appeals to only it reaches only to the people around there okay so his wings are clipped and his feet are tied so he opens his throat to sing helplessly it is inevitable for the caged bird so this is what she felt as a dark lady and she felt the necessity of addressing the racial discrimination so reaffirming the idea that the bird opens his mouth to sing because his desire for freedom and his desire to express himself cannot be contained means once when they felt they had to express they had to do something this is what she felt okay look at the fifth stanza it focuses on the caged bird yet again again okay the author implies that even though caged bird may have never experienced true freedom deep down that bird still knows that it was created to be free it doesn't know anything about what freedom actually is but it feels that it is created to be free the very creation of herself she feels that yes we are born free and we should grow free we should lead our life freely we should have that freedom to move everywhere and do anything that we like for our livelihood this is what she feels okay although freedom to the caged bird is fearful because it is unknown he still sings a fearful thrill because he still longed for freedom and here she reveals that his cry for freedom is heard on the distant hill towards the end she feels that it is heard at a distant hill so the this parallels to the author and her cry for freedom in the form of equality It means the crying of that caged bird and her uh, calling or address to the people around it is parallel to each other so she feels that her cries are heard outside also but only as a soft background noise okay so she still feels that she is caged and that although she sings her cries are heard only as a distant noise okay this poem is parallel to the african american struggle in my angelos time okay with this we end the class thank you